was a typical, you know, husband and wife going to the hospital, excited about the possibility of this is the day that we're giving birth. We went into the delivery room to deliver, and the first baby was born. And it was quite easy and uncomplicated. But then time was going on, and it, uh, it was uh, getting a little bit more uh, hectic in the, in the room. It seemed like the other bir uh, baby was having uh, issues. I didn't know, but I had placenta abruption. And the second baby was a one on the Abcar scale. I saw by the color of her, she was totally white. And um, when I didn't hear her cry, that's when I got nervous and I kept asking the doctor, what's wrong with my baby? And he kept saying, we're doing everything we can. We have the best team working on her. It just uh, was uh, very scary to, to see it. And we're trying to find out what's going on and never been there before. I had nurses next to me that were holding me and reassuring me I was scared. You know, tell me my baby's gonna be okay. Once I heard Sophia cry, I was, they, they were, they, we almost all just sighed relief, all of us. But they really reassured me, the staff there, they, they were fabulous, the nurses, and they, they got me through it. They really got me through it. I was very sure that we were in the best place that we could possibly be. When you're really sick, you need to go to a large, sophisticated hospital. And in Westchester County, really, in my view, that means you need to go to White Plains Hospital. Well, the care that we render here at White Plains Hospital is not just for the patient. The patient, you also have to take in consideration the patient's family. And when, when a patient comes in, their families are also affected. I think about the person when I take care of a patient that's sitting next to the bed next to them. I think about the wife that's trying to hold his hand. Those are, that is what makes me proud of being a nurse. It's not just the patient, it's also those family members that are sitting with them. We receive tons of letters from our patients that you know, are commending us and thanking us for all of the things that we do for them. It was a special day, being that it was Valentine's Day and that he was given a second chance at life. Terry was a real no-nonsense, um, very funny woman. And she was so comforting the entire time and cheerful. She was we wrote her a note. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because um, it was Valentine's Day, which is our, this was, was our 34th wedding anniversary that day. Uh, right. <laughs> it's even more rewarding when you save a, a heart on Valentine's Day. I wouldn't be here uh, if it weren't for Bob. It just, that's just it. And the amount of energy and that goes into being the spouse of a sick person, uh, most people don't realize what it is. Less than an hour after his arrival at ER, my husband was the first patient to receive a stent at White Plains Hospital, which had only the week before opened its catheter cath lab. My husband is a very lucky man, and not because he married me February 14, 1976, but because of the timely help he received February 14, 2010. Before leaving the hospital that night, I said to my husband, well, at least we'll remember this anniversary. He replied sleepily, did I forget to say happy anniversary? Dr. Duffy, I have just this image of him as this knight of shining armor, just kind of coming in and just crackling with energy and walking in and just took charge, looked at the scans, looked us in the face, said to us, you have to trust me. I, I, I need to operate immediately. Every second uh, he was losing his battle for life and um, you know it was a matter of uh, do or die. We had a chance before they actually put him into surgery, they brought us upstairs I guess into this special waiting area and he said you know what come in and see him one more time. And I can just remember going in there and the anesthesiologist kind of looking at me and I looked at Dexter and he was laying on the, the bed and at that point nobody, we hadn't even touched him for, since he came out of the MRI, they basically took care of him. And I just kind of remember bending over and yelling his name and yelling it as loud as I could to, uh, to see if he could hear me. 
so his skull had fractured in several pieces, so like a jigsaw puzzle, we had to size up the pieces and um, attach them all together. The most uh, important thing was that when we took the drapes down and we looked at his pupils, that pupil that had been ominously dilated was now back to normal. So that was the first sign uh, that uh, we had pulled him back from, uh, from what looked like a certain neurologic devastation or, or, uh, or even death. Uh, we walk up to him and he kind of turns his head and I think, Bill, you said to him something about the Mets winning. Yeah. And, yeah. He, and he said, who won? And I was like music to my ears, just listening to him talk. I mean, just, he started to talk almost 10 minutes right. out of recovery. Right. It, was, uh, it was really a miracle, it's yeah. unbelievable. The next morning, uh, and even before I, I got to the ICU, one of the nurses coming out, uh, who I know, said, oh, great job, Dexter is awake and talking. And I'll tell you, I got, uh, as I'm getting now, uh, chills about uh, hearing that kind of news. After we had brought Sigrid up to the intensive care unit, and I came out to tell him, you know, ask actually if they wanted clergy to see her. And he said, yes, he would. I said, I would arrange it. And we had a sign in the waiting room, you know, for Ash Wednesday service. And he said, I would like to go there. So I said, absolutely, you know, and I, I took him down and stayed with him. And uh, we just held hands during the service and prayed for her. And, you know, neither one of us really knew where it was going to go. Toward the end of our uh, meeting, you know, I had, I had to hug her a lot because that's what I do. And um, she was crying and she said, why am I so deserving of this? I said, it's, her, it's not your time. You have a lot left to do and, you know, you have your girls and, and you have a lot of life left to live. And I'm happy that she's able to do that. You never know if you're in a situation like this to save my life. Definitely, to save my life.